this computer. There it is. I got it. There it is. Our official announcement. The map called him in. Oh, the Isha, but all right. Jesus, thing in the list. Digitally, digitally created woman's yeah, It's like the child of recorded music during um, three weeks. It's not even a real person. Yeah, no, no. no it's, it's not even a real person. It's not a woman's voice. The woman in the subway in New York is an actual okay. woman. Oh, it is. Yeah. Terrible. So we have here a very, very nice sugya. Let's see what we can cover in the time that we have. And the sugya begins here in Ksubas on Dab Zion and the base. And this is the famous sugya of Hasanin, which many people just learn through the sugya and they kind of uh, learn it very quickly. But the truth is that uh, there are layers upon layers of lumbus here. It's, it's amazing. So we'll start with Tanura Bonum. So we're on Daf Zayin on the bays, approximately 12, 13, 14 lines up from the Bana. Harold to Tosis, Ibra Maslow, Baha. Tanura Bonum, Mavarchim Pirchas Chasanim, the bays Chasanim. Daf what? Daf Zayin on the bays. Okay then? So keep in mind these two phrases. Pirchas Chasanim, which sounds like the bracha is for the chasan, and the base chasanim probably, again, we'll see the mafarshim, but probably means that this is called the chuppah. The chuppah is when the chasan brings the kala into his bias, to the base hachasan. So knisa the base hachasan, taking her into the base hachasan, that is chuppah. Now we have a discussion in the Gemara about whether or not we should be reciting these brachos the Besa Erisin. We'll leave that out for now. But he says that, I'm not sure if that's for me or, no? Okay. Amar Abaye, Ubi Yehuda, Mepreshim Yisachadim. So it, before Yichud, there has to be Birchas Chasan. And this is based on a Brisa in Mesech the Kala, which is very famous, called Kalablo Brocha Surla So we must have Birchas Chasanin, which is below Brocha, below Brocha, she's Asurla Bailo. Again, why the Brysa co- compares the analogy to Nida, that's a discussion unto itself. But bottom line is that without the Brochos, there's going to be an Isur. And she's Asura Labaila. So before Yichud, you want to remove that Isur. So there shouldn't be any Isur Yichud. Because Kalabalo Brocha Asura Labaila Kidney. Then the Gemara goes on to say, on the bottom of the Yom, Tonur Rabbonin, Mivarchim Birchas Chasanim Biasara, Kol Shiva. So you see on the bottom of Zion of base, we have two Chidushim here. Chidush number one is that we require Asara. As opposed to Birchas Eresin, which is purely a chi of a Birchas HaMitzvah that's incumbent upon the Chasan, and he doesn't need a minion for that. And the second Kiddush here is that Kol Shiva, that the same identical Birchas Chasanin that's recited at the time of the Yichud, which is Chupa, and that creates the Nesu, and the same identical Birchas Chasanin are <laughs> recited Kol Shiva during the entire seven day period of Shiva Simeon Mishta. Rabbi Yehuda, the who shabo ponim chadoshes. This is a big issue here, a big sugi unto itself. What exactly is ponim chadoshos? Rashi seems to indicate that every day is a separate unit, a separate entity, and ponim chadoshes means that he did not participate in the simchas chosmikala during that day. So his last participation was yesterday. Today is a new machayev, and therefore he's considered ponim chadoshes. Most reach on and hold that it's not that every day is a separate unit. The entire seven days is one indivisible unit. And if he was already a participant in the Simcha anywhere, anytime during the Shiva Simeon Mishta, including the wedding itself, according to some Rishonim, then he's no longer Panam Chadash. Every day or every case? Just if you weren't there yesterday, not if you weren't there today. 
That's no, that's Rashi. That you weren't there. No, but if he was there yesterday, he wouldn't be putting kadosh today. today. Right. So like, like, like two, it's almost like two, two day units. Wow. Right, Rashi, right? Okay, that's a good question. Now, Tulsa says another element of the equation that Panu Kadosh is saying it kore ella bivnei adam shemar bin bishvilam asimcha. So you'll see in Poskin they say that according to Tosis, Panam Kadoshos came specifically to be part of the sim, as opposed to a situation that I had after I got married. We had that last Shev Brachos in Eretz Yisrael. I was married in New York, and the issue was whether we could have Shev Brachos on the plane. And the psak I got from Rosh at that time was that no, these people did not come specifically for your simcha. They happened to be there, and Panam Kadoshos means that there. In order to be part of the simcha, lechod chas v'kala, and marbim simcha b'shvila. So again, exactly what Panu Kadosh is is very complicated. The, the next part of the Gemara, which takes you through most of Dav, uh, most of Dav Ches, is the Nusach Habrachos, which is a, that's a sugya unto itself. When is it a brachas muchal chavita? When is it part of the seder abrachos? When is when it's part of the zivug or it's not part of the zivug? And when we could isolate certain brachos, like Asher Bar, the last one, and we could be Mavarth them even without Panam Kadosh. Again, that's the <clears throat> issue of the Nusach of brachos, tremendous, tremendous issue. Now, I sent you, perhaps you got it in the uh, WhatsApp, a number of pages from an essay called Birchas Hassan, and this is the original. It's um, published in Tchumin, number you, number five, it's and the author of this essay was Marif. Very, very long. <laughs> 20 pages here. Who's the author? Myself. So <laughs> I've only criticized myself here. <laughs> but it's a little bit long. So we're not going to go through the whole essay, but I just, I just want to explain what the framework of the essay is. The Abu Jaham, who lived about six centuries ago, claims that all brachos have to fit into one of four categories. And there's a baltosif here. There's no additional category. So let's go through the four categories of brachas according to the Abu Jaham. Number one is birchas ha mitzvah. Number two is birchas ha nenim. Number three is birchas ha or bakasha. And number four is birchas shevach or goy. And I was trying to analyze in this essay how to classify birchas chasan. Under which of the four categories shall we place it? And what are the nafkimims? Because there are many differences in halacha between this category and another category. So let's start with the Rambam sheet. The Rambam is a peric yud, mihulchas ishus. And the Rambam writes, mivarchim birchas chasadim kodem ha before the nisun. Now, as soon as you hear the word kodem, and I'm going to try to prove to you that I'm not the one who yeah. saw this in the Rambam, you're already classifying, in a sense, the bracha, or at least you're excluding one of the four categories. Again, the word kodem, it's hard to uh, pinpoint exactly what the Rambam means by kodem. Like, for example, the Sefer Machne wants to understand, is there a law of a hefsek here that, you know, kodem means got to be samuch. But it sounds very much like we're talking about what kind of bracha. The Birchas mitzvah, because with regard to Birchas mitzvah, we yes, have right. a category of over Lassios, right? Ain't called Mrs. Kulam of Archon Alem over Lassios. And an over means immediately before the, the mitzvah is fulfilled, meaning the brach has to be, so to speak, attached to the Mice of Mitzvah without any half sake in between. And it would seem that the Beis Yosef understood the Rambam as referring to birchas ha-mitzvah, meaning nisuin is a mitzvah. Now, the Beis Yosef doesn't tell us what mitzvah exactly you fulfill with nisuin. And this takes us to another area of halacha, as to whether or not Piri Verivia and nisuin is a sep- are separate mitzvahs. And the Ramam counts nisuin as a separate mitzvah in Tarya. So the Ramam has Piri Verivia, and he has Lekuche Isha which is based on the Pesach Ki'ikach Ish Isha. 
Excellent. So now Yaakov points out that Lekichas Isha, according to the Rambam, has two parts to it. There are two stages, two segments. First, we start with Erisin, but we haven't yet completed Lekichas Isha. And in fact, as long as she's Bebe Savia before Nesuin, is, is she's Asuras, Arus Asura La Arus, and the Matir is going to be Chupa. Now, what exactly Chupa is to create Nesuin is a gigantic Machlokas, but now we're holding like the Rambam. The Rambam holds that Chupa is Yichut. So all that we do, you know, with the canopies and the Klansaos, that reflects other Shittas in Rishonim. My Rebbe, for example, Rav Salvech, was very mocked that the Edim should be appointed by the Chassan or Yichut, something that's not, you know, very widespread, because he was mocked for the Shittas of Rama, that Yichut is Chupa, Chupa is Yichut. And therefore, if Chupa is the Nesuin, then we need Edim. Now, do we need Edim for the Nesuin? That itself is an issue. Is it Edus Lekiyah Madover, Edus Lebira Madover? Those are different issues. But the main point is that according to the Beis Yosef's understanding of the Rambam, the mitzvah of Lekuche Isha Kiyikach has two parts to it. And we need a bracha on that mitzvah. But now you have to ask yourself the following question. What do you do with a mitzvah that has different parts to it? And there are three possibilities. Possibility number one is that you'll make the bracha at the beginning, and that'll cover the end as well. Possibility number two is that you make the bracha at the end, and that'll cover the beginning as well. And possibility number three is that both the beginning and the end require a bracha. Like, for example, you know, the famous hakira <coughs> of the Sefer Achinuk about Sefer HaSaum. Let's assume that Sefer HaSaum is one mitzvah 49. If you miss one day, you've lost the entire mitzvah. And that's one sheet in Rishon. So when should I make the bracha? Should I recite the bracha at the beginning? And one bracha will suffice for all 49 days. Should I make the bracha at the end when I'm about to complete the mitzvah on night number 49? Or should I have a bracha on each, on each segment, on each night? So I'm going to try to derive a conclusion about that question from the Beis Yosef here. The Beis Yosef, again, if you happen to have it, I'll read to you at the mm -hmm. beginning of Simon Samach Beis, it's on the bottom of your first page, Hatam, why does the Rama require that the brachas become kodem hanesuin? Mivuar. Very strange. Mivuar means like it's crystal clear. It wasn't so clear to me in any way. Bishum, the kol hamitvos mevarech alem over lasios. Kol hamitvos. Do you see that? This is Rabbi Yosef Cairo, my friend. Could you imagine that according to Rabbi Yosef Cairo, the Rambam has in mind to classify Birchas Hasanim as a Birchas HaMitzvah. And the Halacha Birchas HaMitzvah requirement is over Lassios, and therefore the Rambam says Kodim HaNesuin. But wait a minute, didn't I already make a Bracha Lekucha If the Mitzvah Lekucha generates a Bracha like any other Mitzvah generates a Bracha, have I not already recited that Bracha? Namely what? Birchas Harrison. Maybe the Beis Yosef wasn't interested in the categories of the Abu Jaham. Uh, forget about the Abu Jaham. No, Leave out the Abu Jaham. Abu Jaham was for Burzon. But for Beis Yosef, all you have to know is that there's a category of brachas called Birchas HaMitzvah. That's maybe, all you have to know. Okay. Says, no, well, what do you mean? He says it's a Birchas HaMitzvah. This is language. He, that say are, he says, he says the mitzvah. following. And therefore, I make a bracha according to the Ramam on, on the suit. This is a mitzvah, but I'm not going to get whether it's because a mitzvah or because a bracha. It's called a mitzvah. Follow you. Because this is a mitzvah. You're making the bracha. 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 There's a category called Birchas HaMitzvah. I don't need the opportunity. So don't call it a category, but every mitzvah requires a bracha, am I right? But we're not so there. don't but call it a no category. Difference. Leave but out the word category. I see you're allergic to the word category. Brachas, not interested with it. Why, why do we keep called the Birchas HaMitzvah? Okay, so leave it out. Leave it out. Again, according to Beis Yosef and the Rama, I make the bracha before the Nesuin, just like I make a bracha on every single mitzvah. Correct? We'll leave out the word category. Categories. 
is is a dirty word to me. Okay, we'll leave it out. Okay. That makes you more comfortable. This is an unbelievable chiddush. What do you mean you're making a bracha? You already made a bracha on the mitzvah. Why make a second bracha on the mitzvah? And there's seven brachas. Okay, wait a minute, Terry. Yeah, yeah, well, I have a nice. whole barrage of questions here, but this, well, just I want you to digest this first. This first question I'm asking, and then we'll get to Jeremy's oh. other questions. There are a ton of questions and objections to this base Yosef. And the Ramban has a whole different understanding of the Rama. The Ramban was three centuries before the base Yosef, or four centuries before this. But that's not my point. My point is that you've already made a bracha on this mitzvah. Why a second bracha? And what conclusion do I derive from the Beis Yosef? Are we assuming the bracha is Eros is a bracha on mitzvah? For sure. It's also Tzimon al-Arayos, blah, 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 blah. Okay, it's, 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 it might also have another element to it, but certainly a bracha on mitzvah. But what conclusion do I derive from the Beis Yosef that Suen requires a bracha on mitzvah? No, I wouldn't say that it, it's very hard to call it a separate mitzvah or the, because it's all under on on one of it. Or the 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 make a bracha on each part of it. Correct. That's what I derive from the base it Depends. That if you have a mitzvah that's made up of different segments, each segment requires its own bracha. Fascinating. I'm not going to go too far with this base and say that he holds it as soon as a separate independent mitzvah because then we're going to end up with tar yad mitzvahs, right? We only have tar yad. So it's one mitzvah of ki'i chicha, but there are parts to that mitzvah. And the Beis Yosef is learning that each part generates its own bracha. So I have a bracha at the beginning of the mitzvah of ki'i on the Eresin, and I have another bracha on the end of the mitzvah, which is misuim. And now, says the Beis Yosef, I plug in the requirement of over Lassioson comes on Jeremy. He says, wait a minute, the same exact bracha we're going to recite for seven days. Not only that, the Ramam holds that in a birchas and mitzvah, if you already implemented the mitzvah, it's too late. The mitzvah is gone. And the Ramam says that if after he was Makati Shanicha with Kesef Shtar he reminded himself of the bracha, too late, the Ramam says. For Gomer Asa Mitzvah, over Lassioson is a precondition. And yet, the Rama writes that if he took her into the chuppah and then he reminded himself to recite the brachas, mevarech, he could be mevarech, the brachos, exactly how long, I don't know, but let's say for seven days, it seems from the Rama. Maybe we'll go through the Rama if we get around. So how could it be that birchas, i.e. birchas nesuin, is a birchas mitzvah? It cannot be a birchas mitzvah because how could the Rama tolerate that you make the bracha not over last yosem, but b'dievet, even Liachar Asiyosin. And not only that, we have to raise the most fundamental question. How could these brachos, which are seven in number, be birchas mitzvah? What mitzvah do you know of that gets seven brachos? And where is the nusa of, of a birchas mitzvah? Do you see any asher kinshan mitzvah in Tzimon? But now, Berzon, you have a problem. Because if you're going to reject the Beis Yosef, you have Number one, you have to ask yourself, so why does the Ram insist that the bracha come? Kodem Hanesun. But secondly, why shouldn't this mitzvah require a bracha? Maybe it's not a problem. This mitzvah does require a bracha, but I already made the bracha. When did I make the bracha on this mitzvah? Yeah. At Arison. Ah, now I come back to the bracha and I answer the following question. The bracha says, Al Yidei, Chuppah v'kidushin. What's that? Is why do we add chuppah? You know, in those days they had a 12 month period. Why do we add chuppah to the Mitzvah Kabrach at the time of the Erison? 12 months in advance. What is it? A deposit? I'm putting a deposit down at Picador for 12 months from now? But the answer is partial. Because since the suin is an integral part of the Mitzvah Kikachich Isha, it therefore requires a bracha. The bracha is going to be at the beginning. Covering both the Erisin and the Nisuin, and we mentioned Ayyadei Chupavikidush. But the Ramban has a different understanding of the Ramban. And this I find extremely exciting. The Ramban, which is again on your second page, and if we ever get a photocopy machine here, we'll be able to photocopy it, because I'm always afraid of sending it out by, uh, by WhatsApp. The Ramban says the following of Rav Rabbeinu Moshe's house in the middle of the second page. 
Do you hear this, Rabosa? This is already a Sibal of a Sibal that the Ramban agrees with the Ramban. We should be, we should be dancing. Very rare. Okay, Adam is dancing. Says the Ramban, Okay, that's premise number one. Chupa equals Yichud. Number two, Be'inon Re'uyo Lebiya. That's premise number two. Chupa is Yichud is premise number one. Premise number two is that you need what kind of a Yichud? Roy Lebiya. Premise number three, Kalablo Broch Asur Labayla Kenido. So how do you set up a Chupa Re'uyo Lebiya, which the Rabbah requires, the Ram famous sheet is that Chupas Nida is Harei Hika Arusa. She's still in Arusa. It's not Chupa. How can you achieve that goal when Kalab Lo Brach Asura Labayla? It's not a Yichud Aroi Labia. The answer is he's going to have to first what? Help me out here, guys. What, what does he have to do before the Yichud? He has to make the Brachas. Is with Mela says Rabban. That's why the Rama requires that the Bracha be before the Nisur in order to set up a Yichud Aroi Labia. So the Chup is Chal. And he goes on and he says, Velo, as, you know, now he's talking to the base Yosef, who's going to come three, four centuries down the line. Velo, and they sheep a cloud called Mitzvah Kula, and Mavar Chaleh, or Valasir. Well, they ply him that the Ramban almost addresses the base Yosef to tell us that the base Yosef is incorrect. And therefore, we know that according to the Ramban's interpretation of the Rama, which the Ramban accepts, the bracha is not on the mitzvah. Again, you'll ask me, but why does it deserve a bracha? And the answer is the bracha, and Ereson will cover the Nisun as well. So what then, according to Ramban, is the essence of Birchas Hassan? Nani. Eli, can you say a little louder? Birchas Nani. Nani. It is a mat, exactly. The Ramban says you have to have a matir because without that matir, the chup is not worth anything. It's not yichud a royal beer. So I need a matir. And it's so fascinating that you know it's as if the Allah turns to the chos and it says, it says the following: Okay, you know, for the last twelve months you've been living separately. You know, she's Chayisha since she's in uh, her father's house. Now you want to enjoy the full benefit of Chayisha's? First, you have to acknowledge God. You want to eat an apple? So first you say, Bar creates. You have to acknowledge that who gave you that apple? Where did it come from? And the same thing applies in marriage, in Zimug, in Ish Isha. And you need a matir. And Kalablo Brach Asula Baila Kedida. And the Yichud is therefore not a Yichud or Royal Labia. And you want to set up a meaningful, valid Yichud so that the Chup will be Chal, you need the Brach. Well, that answers Jeremy's. But it's uh, because uh, once it's verified, then so you could have seven, you could have eight, as many as you. I mean, it's well, no, that's more. Why yeah. not? Say, well, I think what you're saying, saying is that well, when you have verified, then sometimes you'll say Mapisha Ruman, you'll say Shachianu, you could say multiple each one first. Different and dimensions, in other words, there may be different dimensions of acknowledging God. You know, there's, there's some dimension of acknowledging God, of Piskin, Lomi, Manu, Binyan, Adeyad, there might be other dimensions, Asher, Baras, Asher, Basimcha. You know, the, you know, you'd have to really go through the brachos with, with the, you know, with the Ramban's thinking cap on and figure out how each bracha adds mm-hmm. or is mashlim the matir. But again, it is very odd that in this context, as opposed to you know, brach on an apple, you need seven brachos, or shall we say six brachos, to be matir. Okay, that, that, that's what Ellie's saying. You know, we'd have to really analyze each brach and see where and how it plays a role in ultimately creating that matir. Beautiful. So we have now a new pshat, in a birchas matir. Now, let me ask the following question. If I would take the Beis Yosef or the Ramban, who is obligated in this brach? It's the chasan, the chasan <laughs> clearly. If it's a birchas mitzvah, it's his mitzvah, it's his chova. I'm not going to make a brach on your mitzvah. Okay, I could be a shliach for you, but I can't make a brach on your mitzvah. And if it's a birchas hanenim, what shaykhs do I have to the chasan? I mean, he has to be matir, the iser hanor, kalbalo brach. And I begin to understand the Gemara and Ksubis. The Gemara says, let's take a look at it inside for a second. 
Minayin Lebirchas Chasanim Vasar. So we're on Daf Zayin on the base for those who have a Gemara Ksubis. And we are now approximately nine or well, ten lines down from the top. Can we add a word here, just for clarification? And what was the purpose of... There might be another Gemara around there. No, it's, I'll, I'll look it up. So I both say, if, you, if you're with me, what was the purpose of... According to Rav Nachman, in the name of Huna, what was the purpose of Boaz gathering together Asara and Noshim Mizikneh Ir? To Vivarech Birchas Chasan and Asara. So I ask you the following question Who is obligated in the mitzvah of Birchas Chasan? The Chasan. You see that? However, if you take a look at Rabbi Avo, Rabbi Avo, Rabbi Hacha. The Makhelos Birchu Alokiv Hashem in Makar Yisrael. This came Maka. Okay, the Gemara is going to develop why Rav Nachman rejected Rabbi Avo and vice versa. But leaving that out, is there enough Gemina perhaps between the two opinions as to what the root or the origin of Birchas Chasan and Basara? <laughs> what would you say could be enough Gemina perhaps? Who is it? Who's obligated? If you go with Rav Nachman, the shame of Huna, then Vayikach Boaz, Boaz has to guarantee that he could fulfill the mitzvah. And since the mitzvah requires the presence of Asar's Kanim, I don't know why it's Kanim, that we'll have to get back to. Therefore, it was Boaz, Allah, Mutal Achiyu, La Sofa Saran, Ashim Kedesha, who you call the Kayim and Chomata. Whether you call it a Birkhus of Mitzvah, which is very strange, the Birkhus of Mitzvah needs Asara. Or you call it a purpose of Matthew, very strange, why the Matthew needs Asara. But the bottom line is, you need Asara. And if you need Asara, then you, the Chassan, are obligated to guarantee that there'll be Asara. So I live now in, uh, where was I yesterday? Not yesterday, the day before, with Ari Harrell. We had a day's uh, teul. What's it called? We went to Ari Abramowitz. Abramowitz, uh, sorry, I said Harrell. I meant to say Abramowitz, yeah. Where, what's the name of the place there? Right. It's uh, Nachal something or other. What? I got, I got. Yeah, I go. So you know, I can't get married over there because there's no minion. And I'm obligated to, to recite the Birchas Hasanim. I mean, it was more than a minion, but they, they were cousins of ours. You know. Maybe you can be tired of the sheep. But, but the bottom line is that the Hasan is obligated. Vayikach Boaz. I both say, you hear this? Vayikach Boaz. It's so important. If on the other hand I go with Rabbi Avo, then my kalos. What does my kalos mean? What kind of obligation is that? On the tzibur. On the tzibur. Yeah. So if it's on the tzibur, it's just like a a when you have a kahal, make a brach. Exactly. No. If you have a kahal, oh, I don't know. Okay. 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 Well, one second. You're, 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 you're a step ahead. Of me. But I'm saying pashtus. You know, you're already saying chidushim. I think pashtus is like the Ramban in Masechta Megillah. The Ramban says that Kriyas HaTorah is a Chovas Tzibur. And Rav Salvechi used to always say over the Ramban, and he would make two additions. He would say, Rav Chaim held that it's a Chovas Yochid. And Rav Chaim would get off the train on his way from Brisk to Bialystok in order to catch a minion on Mondays and Thursdays. And then he would add another comment. After he said over the Ramban, he would say, we don't know where the Ramban is. So Rabbi Blau, if you know Rabbi Blau, right? Rabbi Blau told me that he found the Ramban. Mm-hmm. And he was sitting next to Rav Salavetri. And he wanted to show him the Ramban. And tell him, Rebbe, I found the Ramban. He couldn't get the words out of his mouth. He was so nervous. <laughs> so he took the Ramban and he went like this. The Rav closed the Gemara and he says, we don't know where the Ramban is. <laughs> That's part of the Mitzvah. We don't know where the Ramban is. But Baruch Hashem, we know where the Ramban is. It's published off the dock. Like the whole sugya of Asara is on Megillah Chav Gimel, but the Ramban published this on Dav Gimel. So it's hard to know where the Ramban is. But it's in the Mulchavis. I saw it in my own arms. So now we have to ask, 
if the makelos birchalokim, who's obligated? Is it the makelos that are obligated? I don't have to get off the train. I don't have to gather together. I saw a noshim. I can, you know, I can be there and nachal arugot and 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 without a minion, and I'll get married. It's fine. So there won't be shavu rov. It's a big deal because it's only a chovah on makelos. What do we say? No. It's you, as Doriel said, it's your obligation, but you can only fulfill that obligation if and when you have Asara. Even according to Rabbi Avo, it's a Chovas HaChasan, but Bitnai, that he has Asara. Where do we find such a thing, a Chovas Yochid that requires Asara? I don't know if you got a chance to look over my article at all. In Birchas HaGomel. Birchas HaGomel is a Sheva Chodo that's Mutal, Alanito, he you are sorry, you're doing this, I do. and he was saved. So he has an obligation of what? What kind of bracha are we dealing with? I'm not going to use the word category here because Yaakov's going to kill me. Uh, type of bracha. Okay, what type of bracha are we deal with? Shevach Odoya. Who's obligated to Shevach Odoya? Again, you can only say, Kol Yisrael Chaveim Zelazer. If you were saved, then I was saved because we're all one goof. And you can give a whole philosophy discussion about it. But I'll be a locha. Who's obligated to Sheva Chodoy? The Nitzal. But he cannot do it unless he has a sar. So who's going to be obligated to guarantee that he has a minion in order to be a first birth as a Gomel? There's a Chobetz Yachid with a Tznai of Tzibur. And we could say the same thing even according to Rabbi Yifo. But the Pashtus would be that according to Rabbi Yifo, it's for Makelos. If there's Makelos, then we all have to thank Hashem. Why do we all have to thank Hashem? Because there's something about marriage that's related to Kedusha Sisra. And it's no coincidence that already in Birchas Erison, we mentioned Kedusha Sisra. Like the Rabbi opens up Hilfus Ishus, and he tells you how before Matan Torah, a man would find a woman, blah, blah, blah. There was no permanence to the, to the relationship. And uh, when they wanted to terminate the relationship, you know, just bye-bye, Charlie. It was like me and if you know what I'm saying? And that's all. And then the Torah gave us a Kenyan, a Kenyan Ishus, and the Kenyan Ishus goes in two steps with Eris and Nesuin, and that's Kedusha Yisrael, Mekadish Yisrael, Ayyadei Chupa Vakish. That's Kedusha Yisrael, and at every opportunity of Kedusha Yisrael, the Tzibur is obligated in a broth. And that's the Birchas Chassanim according to Rabbi Yavon. However, there's a fourth Shita, the fear of Yisrael. And that's the sheet of the Masech Tekal. The Masech Tekal doesn't appear in the Shas, it's a Braiso. But the Masech Tekal brings three different sources for Birchas Hassan. Not the source that we saw here, and not the source that we saw in Rabbi Avo. But I think there's a common thread for all three. I'll read you the Masech Tekal. This on page, uh, I guess, if you have the pages, no, but it would be page three. It says the following: Shenemar, es Rivka. Who, my friends, were the great, great tzaddikim who were Rivka? Love on, love on. Bisuel and love on all these guys that are probably wasn't that? Okay. Whatever it is, Lovely. I mean, this was not a great, you know, uh, you know a great group of guys. It's brothers. It's brothers. It's the brothers. Achosay. Good thing yeah. to tell yeah. us. Don't be so yeah. upset that your family wants to honor this person. They're not such a great society. They're better than love. <laughs> They're better than love. <laughs> They're better than love, right? Rabbi Yochanan Meir Hocha, Vayivarech Osam Elokim. Right, I'll escape period of a review. Vayivarech Osam Elokim. Minayin afilu asora, afilu almana, is therefore yikach asora in Rosh Hashanah. Now, the Masech Tekala quotes more of the Pesach than we have in the Pavli. And it says, Vayomru kola om asher b'shar, vazkedim edim. Okay, we have to know what that means. But yitain Hashem es ha'isha avoyal b'secha k'rachel ukele. I think, Rabotzei, check me out if I'm right on this, that there is a minute during the Badekin that the two fathers will recite this post for the Kal. Did you ever see that? I've seen the brachas. I'm not, yeah. familiar with, with, I'm not familiar with what they say to them. Right. Okay. Not yet. Well, you'll get to it. That's That's not, so. Anyway, what's common to all of these? Even the, even the Alfusa from Boaz, because the 
Mesech the Kal is very mocked to quote the actual Nusach HaBracha, you know, Kerachel Ukaleya. Rabbi Riskin actually has told people to make a, that bracha for their daughters on Friday night. Thank you. I heard it already. Oh, it's published in... Uh, you might read it in the book. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Abosai, what then, according to the Sechlikala, is the nature and the purpose of Birchas Hasani? The third, the third one is that the, the people around them, Correct. the people there are, are, are giving you a bracha. Shem, so, you know. so, the bracha is really coming from the <coughs> Kahal to the Hasan and Kala. And I said to myself, wait a minute, where do we find such a thing? I looked over Birchas Hassan, and it's all about Sheva Doya. But if you take a look at Rashi, Rashi says the following. I think it's published on the top of Davches. You would think if it was on him, you'd certainly say Hassan Menaminyan. But the Gemara clearly says that everyone, so everyone says Hassan Menaminyan for the Tana. No, the Gemara has two days about where the Chassid no, is. No, but, 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 but that's not a Chris Chassid. Oh, yeah? I didn't remember that. I thought there were two days where the Chassid is in a minion. Let's, let's go through this. But first, I just got off a little bit on the side. I wanted to show you a Rashi. Oh, here it is. If you have to have Chesam and Aleph on the right column before it gets wide, Rashi, Misameh Chassam Akala, Ubachrona, Rashi works hard to explain the difference between the last and the next to the last brachos. Lefisha simchas bracha rishona lo be simchas chasen olamrim. Sharei tefilahi. Isn't that amazing? Rashi is telling you black and white that this bracha, the next to the last bracha, is a tefila. Shem is palim umevarchim. She used smechim bat slocha kol yameim. Amen. I added the omen. Because <laughs> we, you know, it says, you know the story about Rav Chaim and Rav Shim and Shkup, they were walking arm in arm. So Rav Shim was telling over a chiddush that he had that Ishus is mischadesh as kol regum vareg. It's not that there's a chalos kinyan Ishus, and that's chal automatically, but every minute is a new chiddush of, so Rav Chaim says, oi bazoi, kum tira mazel tov. In any event, but what we see here is that you need a bracha of Hatzlacha kol yameim. Don't think that just because you and your wife had a lot of shalabais yesterday, that means anything for today. You know, in Breslau, they say every day is a new day. You know what I'm so that's what Rashi says, kol yameim. They need that bracha kol yameim. We should really have birchas kasanim every day. You know, a new set of birchas kasanim. But Rashi clearly calls it a tefillah. And this Rashi, I think, should be connected with Birchas, with the, uh, what you call it, the Mesech uh, Kala, that derives from three different sources that Birchas Chasadim is a brach and a tefillah. Well, last night I was learning with Adam and a group of Chaberim in uh, Tamar, and I asked them if there's a Chal Hashem Kiv Mitzvah when you send your wife a birthday card or an anniversary card, so they said, yeah, it puts her in a good mood. There's a Chal Hashem. What is the purpose in halacha of sending someone a card, whether it's your wife or friend, whoever it is? They call it in Hebrew, Ichulim. Are you familiar with that word? Right? What is the goal in a halachic sense of Ichulim? It's a tefillah. You should have a happy birthday. And now we say that Birchas Chasanim is a tefillah. But now the question is, if Birchas Chasanim is a tefillah, like Shmona Esri, just that the Tzibur is out. Now here again, we get back to the question of whether Chasan Atzim bin Arminian and whether the Chasan is obligated in Birchas Chasanim. Clearly, according to Rashi and the Masech Likala, who's obligated in Birchas Chasanim? If in, in Sheva Chodoya, we were vacillating back and forth, maybe the Tzibur is obligated in Sheva Chodoya, because they participate in the Kedushas Yisrael of Zivuk. Maybe it's the Chassan, but he needs Asara. But one thing is crystal clear. If you go into Masech Kala, who's obligated in the Mitzvah of Birkas Chassanim? It's a Tzibur. I'm not going to be Mavarek myself. I mean, I have to be Mispal myself. I'd slach and call you name. But you see clearly that it's the Tzibur that's bestowing a bracha and be Mavaki Shetfil on behalf of the Chassan Kala. I'd slach and call you name. 
And if I would ask you the following question, this was asked to the Chassam Sofer, you know, some 150 years ago, the case that I mentioned before, Nachal Arugot, do I have to go ahead and guarantee myself a minion when I get married? And marry in a place where there's 10 people. So now I would say the following. If you go with Bir Chassam Mitzvah, for sure you're out if you go with Birch HaSadenim, for sure you're obligated. If you go with Birch HaSadenim, maybe yes, maybe no. But if it's a Birch HaSadenim, who's obligated to feel? The Tzibu. So I found another tshuva that some so fair. Very interesting tshuva, which I have here in this article, about Birch Kohen. Do we have any Kohen in here? No? Anyway, the question is, can a Kohen be Mavarech twice? You know, it's like, for example, where I go in Imre Shefer, if you go in Harnov, so like, you don't even know which vineyard you're part of. There's so many people going on. You can stand there and be part of three vineyards. Anyway, so the Kohen wants to know about being Mavarich Birchas Kohanim over and over again. And he says the following. Interesting. He says, I'm going to say it in my language. We can see it inside if you like. He says there are two dimensions to Birchas Kohanim. One is the Chovas HaKohen, Chos of Archos B'nei Yisrael. And then the Tzibur has a Chiv to be Misbarich. Like when I was at Shivan with Vaseret Zion, if you ever heard of the place, there was a whole issue. Who should yell out Kohanim? You know, is it the Gabai? Is it Rosh Hashiva? Is it the Rebbe? Who, who should do it? So I said, you know, come on, guys. This is Shtuyot. Like, what difference does it make? But it is very important because when you yell out Kohanim, it's a Bakoshas <laughs> Roch. And it's interesting in Lush and Kodesh, in grammar, Hebrew grammar, some Sofi used the word Choval Lihis Barech. Which I think is called his pael, am I right? Lehis mm-hmm. barech. That's some so. So could it be that the chasan? Again, this is just my own uh, imagination. The chasan has a chiv lehis barech, and therefore, even according to the sect of Kala, it could be that the chasan is obligated to get married in a place where he can achieve lehis barech. Without the categories, the brachas, put it according to... Without the Masechus. categories, okay. No, You're okay with hope. But yeah. the, with, with Masechus Kala, they can't live together. Forget about what, what kind of bracha it is. If you don't have 10 and you don't make the bracha, they can't be together. Because the Kala below bracha, yeah. was, that's, oh, that's the yeah, as, as far as this question, right. what do you need then to the bracha could come yeah. later on. Let's say he's not, he's not okay. having a relationship with her until uh, whatever, a week later or so. Well, she's in need of... Uh-huh. Right, we're going to the Ranchi to that book of Steve's Kona. Doesn't uh, explain the, who doesn't explain? Who doesn't Tosu. explain Tosu. The, um, the Maseches Kala as extreme, as we've said now. Which Tosus is it? Um, three three Tosus up from the bottom on Zainal base. Okay, one second. I'm reading, uh, the I'm reading on. Kala below this, the, le- the last of the first wide line. I'm reading ka- first of the last. Um, I'm reading Kala below Bracha Sura. The Bala Kinida. That's the quote. Right. right. Why? Ulafi Shepe Omen Baala Shalola Shem Chopa. Therefore, Osim Bracha Mikhila Kadeshe Kalab of Racha. It's not, it's not required. It's just that sometimes people would do, they, they would uh, sleep with them. Shalola Shem Chopa. Therefore, we have the Bracha beforehand so that she will be with the Bracha. So that she, so that she will be a Kalab of the Bracha. But it's not, it's not. It's not that you can't be without. It's just that people mess up. No, the bra- the brach is to frame what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Language is very strange. Mm-hmm. It's not so Are clear, you, clear what he means. Kid, uh, they should take. No, 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 I, no, I, no, I, I would have said he needs a matir no, no, as well. No, 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 that's it. General, not like the Yeah, I think so. He's because he's saying like he's he's like we want you to get you you know the right kavanas. No, it's still a matir. That's what it seems like. I because you could be in the chopo without uh, just you got to know what you're doing. Right. And therefore, what? Therefore, if you don't make like the bracha, then at least not surah. No, you can't. But that's what he's saying. He's saying it's not. That's not the problem. You can. No. He's just no. saying we, we, we institutionalize. We institutionalize. You need to have the bracha because uh, some people mess up. So, are you able to hear what's going on? <laughs> okay. I just saw his son-in-law. I asked for a bracha. He's a coward. <laughs> Now, what do we know about Chasan Atzvah bin Aminyan? Right, but is there a machlokas about that? I thought there was a machlokas about that. 
Omer of Nachman, Omer of Hassanim, and Amin. The only thing there is that whether or not. Nevelam or Amin. Well, let me just tell you this. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get back to Jeremy Bem Sheikh, but the Sefer Machna, which is uh, one of the most important achronim on Seder Noshim, he says that this whole Gemara is only according to Rabbi Avo, but according to Rav Nachman in the name of Huna, ain't achosim min amin. Mm. And he's with Daigit from the fact that it says, Vayika was a Sora Noshim. He should have been and taking nine. nine. So the Sefer Machna says, Why did the Possek, you know, you know, Lenetzach had to point out that Boaz had to gather 10 people? So I was thinking that one Mahalach could be that if we go to Mesech the Kal and Rashi, that there's a Brocha which is a Tfilah, then you need a Sora Mispalal. You with me on that? And therefore, Eina Chosen Mina Minyan. And one of the three psukim that the Mesech Lekal quotes is Vayikha Boaz. And then it goes on to quote the bracha that they bestowed, these Asar and Noshim Skenim bestowed upon Boaz and Rus. And therefore, the Chosen himself is not part of the Minyan because you need a Minyan of its power. But here I wanted to tell you about a Kirke Drabi Ilyas. And this is on page two, I think, of your, you just see what page it would be. On page four. Oh, first of all, before we get to the Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer, we have here Mordechai, at the beginning of Exubus, he says in the name of the Gaonim, that Mokom she'en baki levarech durchas erisin o nesuin, el achosin bovad mevarech li atzma. So the Mordechai admits that the Chosen himself, if need be, can recite the brachas. And if you take a look in the Rabbeinu Avram, in Rambam, he says that our meaning is that the Chosen gives out the brachas to others, as you mentioned earlier. And why? Mishum Yuara, or Kadesh Lo Yivayish is Mishen So you don't want to embarrass someone they didn't have to do in print today. We had. So he doesn't know how to recite the Sheva Brachas, so you give it to someone else. <coughs> Everyone's going to give it to someone else. Sounds like the Gemara at the end, the time is about, you know, two bob, you know, the girls would borrow uh, clothing. But fundamentally, everyone seems to agree that if not for Yuara, and if not for Kadesh Lo Yavayesh, who would be making the Brachas? Awesome. The Chassan. So that fits very well. If you hold the Sabirka Sabbits for the way the base also understood the Rambam, it fits very well if you hold that it's a Birka Sabbatir, the way we developed in the Ramban in the Rambam. If it's a Birka Shevach Vodoya, then it's like Birka Sagomil if you assume that you just need Asar for the Kiyom Habrocha, but the Machayev is on the Yochid. If it's Tfilah, then I think what the Mordechai is saying is that. The less prayer of there's no one in the tzibur who could make that bracha and recite that tefillah. So let the chassan himself recite the tefillah, but really he's doing it on behalf of the tzibur. Now, here I have to ask you the following question. Why if, do we say Yorah yeah. then? Why do we, Why say? Do we say because of Yorah? If, if the chiyah was on him. Right, the Mordechai is saying that it's not Yorah. The Mordechai is saying that basically the chiyah is on the tzibur. It has nothing to do with Yorah. He's not the Mavarek. However, he says, you know, if there's no one to step up to the plate, so he'll, he'll recite the bro. But on behalf of the Tzibur. But here I have the following question. If we assume, according to the Masech Kala, and Rashi seems to indicate that the Brach is a Birchus then Rashi identifies one out of the six Brachos. All right, let's open up the Gemara here. On the right, there's six Brachos. And Rashi says that the fifth of the sixth is a birchas hatfila, samech to samech reim ahuvim, kesamecha yitzurcha ganer mikedem. So, what question should we ask? All right, one out of six. That's not a very good batting average. Oh, well, it's not bad, I guess. Mm-hmm. But what about the other five? So the first two brachas are not are not schwer at all because it seems that the first two brachas are not part of the seder of birchas hazim. 
But even if you cut out two, you're still left with the third, the fourth, and the sixth. The third might, might maybe is not schwer because the third bracha is also a tefillah, but it's a different type of tefillah. It's not a tefillah on behalf of the Chosen Kala, but it's a tefillah on behalf of the Gugula Asida, because we say that ultimately, you know, there'll be a marriage relationship at the time of the Gugula, et cetera. But then we have the third bracha, let's say, for example, okay, that might be. A birchat filo, but we have Asher Yitzar Sadom B'Tzalmo. That certainly is a birchas Hashem for Doya Benuscha, and then we have the sixth bracha, which is Asher Baras Sadom B'Simcha, and Asher Baras certainly is a birchas Hashem for Doya. So why, if the essence of the brachos is to be identified with bracha number five, Samech to Samach Reim Havuviv as a birchat filo, you hear my question? So the Baal HaMaimar here has an answer. We'll see if we like it or not. He has a Gemara in Mitzach the Brochos. The Gemara says in Mitzach the Brochos, Li'olam Yisadir, Darach Shav Simloi, Excellent. Li'olam Yisadir Adam, Well, what's the language here? Let me just see it inside. All right, I'm not going to waste your time here. It's right here on page three. Oh, here it is. Page three of the three pages I sent you. And it says the following. The Achakach Yispalel. Because the Pesach says, Vayomer Hashem misinai bov v'zorach misinai lomo, that's Shevach, v'yachakach posach v'tzorachon chal Yisrael, shenemar v'yihi b'tru melech, etc., etc. Then, the Gemara adds in the name of Rav Simloi, v'chazar v'chosam v'shvach v'shal bokh, shenemar ein kakel Yisuru. So it could be, that we have to sandwich the tefillah with an introduction of Shevach and a conclusion of Shevach. So before we make the bracha of Samech to Samach. It's like a machlokas about the nature of tefillah. Is it Shevach, Shevach Bakasha Shevach versus Shevach Bakasha Hoda? Correct. So I'm not sure if the last bracha here is Shevach or Hoda. But be that as it may, I think the structure, the Seder Abrochus, is very meduyak now, according to Mesech Kala, because before Samech to Samech Reim Ahuviv, we have Asher Yatsar Sadon B'Tzalmo, which is Shevach, and then after that we have Asher Barach, which is either Shevach Vodah, again, you could, you know, think about that. So that the essence of the Brocha is a Berchas HaTfilah, but we can't just jump in and with a Tfilah, so I guess before you send a birthday card, you have to first thank Hashem and then send the birthday card, and then another Shema. So that's what we have in the structure of Shema. Now we have a question whether the Chosan is obligated in the mitzvah. And we had the Mordechai again, just to review that if no one else can make the bracha, then like the Shasat Chak, the Chosan will make the bracha. Also, on that Mahalach, it would make a lot more sense for one person to make all the brachas. Why is that? It's one, not it's to break up the continuity? So I'm not sure if I would go that far, but the dancing and the singing with the music, I don't know. I have, uh, I never asked Reb Chaim about it. I wanted to always ask him. <laughs> okay. So it's not even between the brachas. That's in the middle of the brachas. They do it in the middle of the brachas? That's for sure it's unacceptable. Even according to S.C., Shlomo Kalba, right? Even he wouldn't have gone that far. I don't know, between the brachas, okay. Uh, in the H. Acher Levar, says the Mordechai, if there's someone else who can make the bracha, I'll yivarech a chosim. Okay, he doesn't want the chosim to be bracha. All right, fine. So we went through the various shitas as to who's going to make the bracha. 
and who's ob- and is the chassan obligated to gather together the people? And the question of whether or not it's a shevach boy that's a chovas hatzibur and not a chovas hachassan. And therefore, the tzibur is obligated not to chassan. Or should we say no, that just like Reb Chaim held that in, in Kriyas HaTorah, the Chiv is on the yachid, but he needs the tzibur. And we saw it also in Birchas HaGomel, the Chiv is on the yachid, but he needs the tzibur. But the question is why? Did you say if it it's a chovas yachid, why do we need a tzibur? Yeah. It was the Sefer Makhlis that said that the whole Gemara was going according. I to, think so, if I remember correctly. So then, would he also say then the Gemara at the bottom of Hanim Chadash is only related to that opinion? Why do you need Hanim Chadash? Let's, let's think about it. If it's a Birch Shevach Odoyah, so we have to be Machadesh the Shevach Odoyah. No, I'm saying, but if it's, if it's, it's a, 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 a Chiv, I'm just I'm going slow. But if it's a Chiv on the Chasan, why do we need Hanim Chadash? But here I have a whole piece. Well, clearly, about, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Sorry. No, that the difference between Sheva Brachas under the Chuppah yeah. and Sheva Brachas for the Shiva Simeon Mishnah. Well, Even that. if we hold that the Chovas Birchas Chasadim is Mutelis ala Chasan, that's only which set of Sheva Brachas? First. The first. The others clearly are Sheva Chodoya. And you could ask yourself, well, who's obligated to Sheva Chodoya, etc., etc. And I would insist that at least Lalacha. The Chiyav is on the Tzibur, not on the Chas. And therefore, I don't know this whole business that, you know, today it's in vogue that we go crazy to make sure that, you know, every day and, you know, and before Shkia, before the last day, all these Chumras, I don't know. I'm not sure if we have to go that far. I mean, once a day is nice. Maybe to write for Shem Shkaf that every day is a new mitzvah. A new is conscious of the issues. You come home and tell your wives, what did I learn from Rabbi Berza today? Oh, I learned that we just got married. <laughs> At least according to Rabbi Berza. I'm excited for Rabbi Shimon to come to the Shkaf. Oh, excited for Rabbi Shimon to come to the Oh, man, it's very romantic. It's really romantic. You have to find. You know, I once, I don't know if you ever heard of Rabbi Shalom Eisen, the Kronel of Rocha. He was the final posting in the Badats. You know, he wore the strimal and the gold stripes and everything else. So when I came in Aliyah to Israel, I was a newlywed. I had my last year of in, in Yushalayim. And I asked my brother, who's here many years before me, you know, I'm going to have Shilas. Who should I ask the Shilas? So he says, go to the Badats. I said, Hanan, you do me a favor. I need a couple of coolers here. I don't know. <laughs> he said, all the coolers, you'll get the Badats. You know, it's like the famous story of uh, Revel Yoshi. You know, Rebel Yosha was sitting in the back of the car. They were driving him, and, they, and the car stopped. So Rebel Yosha was curious. Why did it stop? He said, Rebbe, there's a red light. He says, that's not red. <laughs> 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 so all the coolest you'll get from, uh, from the Badats. <laughs> anyway, so I went to Rebbe Shalom Eisen, And I, I always asked him my questions in the, in the Badats. And then one time, <clears throat> he had always said to me, if you're ever around with your wife, I'd like to say hello to you all. So we went to Bate Nathan. Now, if you know Bate Nathan, it made sure there are like three floors. You really have to climb up the steps. So when I came up with my wife, Rav Shalom Eisen gave me a shpach. He gave me a musash roots. Your wife climbed up three flights of stairs. She was pregnant at the time. He says every morning you have to bring her a slippers to the bed and biscuits. He <laughs> said, this, I'll never forget. This is Rav Shalom Eisen. You know, <laughs> anyway, so getting back to the Rav Shimon Shkaf, no, no, forget it. So now I have for you a Chiddush uh, in the Pirkei de Rebelos. The Pirkei de Rebelos, which I don't think I got a chance to photocopy for you, says the following. Kol edus ne'mono b'Yisrael basoro. Edus ne'menes b'Yisrael basoro. He gives a whole list. Edus bris mila basor. Edus hames, which means kavurus hames basor. Edus birchas Hashem basor. Kiddush Hashem is only basor. Edus chalitza basor. So the commentaries say that basor in chalitza is kedelo diel akarnim that they should marry. And then the last one on the list is edus birchas nesuin be asor. What does Birchas Nesuin have to do with Edus? And basically, the underlying concept here 
of all these cases, says the Radal, the Radal is the super commentary on the Pirkei Darby Lezer, he says, Edus means pearsum. Whenever you need pearsum to publicize something, it's not enough to put it on WhatsApp, you've got to say it and declare it in the presence of how many? Ten. Ten, Ten is pearsum. And it's a sugya about mecha in the Chesk Sabatin, whether you need pearsum to ask Sarah, sugya erchen about Tlosh and Hara, pearsum is by Sarah, blah, blah, blah. Fine. We have even another sugya, pearsum of the Psah. Correct, and that's why Boaz gathers together 10 people, according to Rabbi Avo, in order to notify Moavi, Veloma, Fiyah, because the Psak has to become the Fursam, and it's got to be public in front of us, and therefore you need to came. But now I'm saying that according to the Pirkei de Rabbi Lezen, I think I have another explanation for the conclusion of the Sefer Amakna that Boaz had to gather together 10 people. And it wasn't enough that he would gather together nine people. Is anyone following me? Why? I'm asking you to read my, my mind. Don't get it over. You can't be an ape. Exactly. Pearson means that I know X and I want you to know X. I'll give you an example. The Midchas Chinuch says that if they say to you, change your shoelace in front of nine Jews, he says, you're not chayv in Kiddush Hashem. It's only in the presence of 10. Says the Menchaz Chinuch, why? Why don't we say, chasen makani shatzul min minyan? And he answers, because the, the mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem is piercing. And you have to be mafarsim in front of 10 Jews that you're willing to give up your life on Kiddush Hashem. Whenever there's a public Kiddush Hashem, a declaration, for example, we're going to take this child and we're going to implement Milo. Says the Pirkei, the Rebbe Lezer, we need Asara, because it's Edus B. Israel. What's the Edus B. Israel? That this child is entering into Bri Social Avram Avinu. And for that, we need 10 people. And what's Edus Nehmanus B. Israel with regard to Birchas Nesuin? The Gemara says in Moe Katan, Me Hashem Ishli Isha. We think, all right, I went out with this girl for six months, and I'm jealous of those who... New on the first date. <laughs> but in my case, it took a long time. It was a schlep to myself. I'm saying six months for Lush and Amata. <laughs> it was a lot more than six months. Anyway, so what is it? But it's going well since I mean, yeah, Baruch Hashem. It's really we're almost getting to 45. <laughs> it's it's a every day. Day. It's well. Right, every day is a new conscience. But what I wanted to say is that. The chasan, and, and now I, I, I conclude that according to the Perkei de Rabbi Lezer, the Chiyim of Birch Sadev is, is mutal ala chasan. He's the one who has to give an edus to Amon Yisrael. And what's the content of his edus? What is the Kish Hashem here to be mefarsim HaKadosh Baruch Hu and his Ashkocha? Then may Hashem ish You know, a female animal will find a male animal and they'll uh, mate together. That's it. And the next day they, they go on to, to, to greener pastures. But we say that it comes from Hashem. You'll ask me why is that some marriages don't work out? Okay, God gives you a challenge. You know, just because I found you a good girl and it didn't work out for you, that's your problem. Maybe that's your desire. But it's me Hashem Ish. And that's why I believe that according to the Pirkei Dreb Lezer, the Chassan himself is obligated in Sheva Brachas, but he has to gather together Asara Noshim Chutzmi because he needs to be with us. It's not possible in that way. You don't need 10 in addition. I think we pass in Chosad Atzim in a minion based on the Bavli, but again, you know, the, the Duke of the Sefer Abbat in Vayikat Bos is very kichmak. It's, a, it's very alluring. It's very enticing. Okay, so I see uh, our time has run out. So we covered the first four and a half pages of a 20 page article. We'll write a letter to the Machaber that he shouldn't have admired so much. So I wish you all a great week and uh, Shka, thanks for coming. Oh, yeah. A special, yeah. special thanks to Daniel for organizing this. I mean, I, I was at loss. I went up to the third floor. It is Shrek. <laughs> and not only that, I ate my breakfast with Joe Cork and sent me with some milk. I slept at his house last night in Dekel. And um, I ate, I, I can't begin to tell you, I was like so, eating between the dust, right?
So it's really a kiyum of Bein uh, HaMetzorah. There's no uh, sodas there. It's concrete dust. And then I said, there's no way. And just for a mark of a pot, it says no way of having the shear up front. The Arabs came in to do the work. Yeah. So then well, I come down here and I find out that, the, which I knew already, that there's going to be a million at 830. So I, you know, I was desperate. I called up uh, our friend Yehuda Khan, and he's busy, I think, with a, a family uh, Leviathan. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it, I don't want to say it out loud, but I think his grandmother passed away. In any event, so he writes back to me that there's a wall in the back, and I'm wondering around. It's a wall in the back. I don't see a wall in the back. And Daniel put this whole wall there, single handed. So Shkayat to Daniel, yeah. two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Okay, then. Hey, much have a great, great. I think with the it can never work. It's always going to work there. I'm sure it's not significant. Oh, this one.